to the channel guys now you guys know how i do my video shoots i'm always on a budget and i always try to use stuff that you can use at home to make superb videos so as you can see over here trusty camera lumix g7 light number one light number two let me make some amazing videos you are watching king crisis tv Now on my Lumix G7 here, I'm using my 14 to 14 to 42 millimeter lens. This is the kit lens. And I already told you guys about my two lights, trusty light panels. And today I'm doing a video on Red Bull. Now this video is not sponsored by Red Bull. <laughs> I haven't started getting those big sponsors as yet because trust me, they're coming. Now let me get further into details. For my rotation shots, you know I'm gonna need green screen, green cartridge paper, watch and learn, King Crisis style. Alright guys, so I don't have any fancy rotational device, so I made my own because I will be doing some green screening. So I made this little thing right here and I will be using my turntable to rotate the can or the canister off the Red Bull. You see expensive setup this is so expensive this is straight from hollywood and this this i got it from walmart the biggest company in the world yes this is an expensive check out my expensive green screen that is ten thousand usd right there on the wall <laughs> psych all right guys so my setup is ready as you can look over there using my contraction which I made using my DJ controller and this bottle I wrapped in green cartridge paper to get the green screen and I have the camera all set up that shall look so nice and green <laughs> all right let's get filming I place the canisters on top of the little device that I wrapped in green cartridge paper I also tried my best to light the background with the green cartridge paper as best as possible because the way green screen work in Premiere Pro and After Effects it is keyed better the more you light the background and the uniform that light is so you should try to remove all shadows as possible and you will have a beautiful and uniform keying when you're keying the videos in After Effects or Premiere Pro now After Effects is more suitable for keying but in this case I will be using ultra key in premiere pro all right guys so i sprayed the can so it has some droplets like it's condensing like it's cold all right guys so i'm gonna proceed to the editing of the videos now please bear with me with the noise in the background as i live very close to the main road and you will have vehicle passing from time to time and also some persons yelling in my background because it's around 2 p.m. in the evening now where I am Jamaica and I just want to get this video up on the channel so you guys can see how I made this um, commercial for Red Bull unofficial commercial because I have posted it for quite some time now on Instagram and I have been getting a lot of questions and I just want to show you guys how I do it behind the screen of my computer <laughs> all right now let's go so the first thing I normally do is color grade my footages. I know a lot of persons may color grade last, but I like to do it first so it doesn't mess up my text or if I have any effects or whatever going on in my footages, the color grading on the adjustment layer won't be of any problem once I'm adding other elements, effects, so on and so forth. So as you can see, this shot is a bit flat because I shot in, in a flat profile, log profile. Now I go to the color section in Premiere Pro and my user interface may be different from yours because I have laid out mine in a way that is comfortable for me when coloring. Each of my tabs are different. I have this one for effects and my timeline and so on and so forth. And this is my color tab. I like my preview window to be the biggest because I want to see more details of the colors I'm adding. 
over here I have the Lumetri scope tabs open so I can see what is going on when I tweak my settings over here in the Lumetri color section now the first thing I want to do I want to get this tab up here with the blacks touching zero and the whites touching 100 so I'm gonna pull down the black until it starts to touch the zero down here now it is touching the zero and the whites ways you can pull up the whites is by pushing the white itself directly also the highlights and the exposure now this looks this looks lovely where it is at now now also i always tweak my contrast to make the blacks look more realistic and also give it more highlight so you can see that there is light in the scene and it's not so flat and then normally go down to my creative section because from the basic section my white balance is always set on what i want it to be on from within shooting now down to the creative section i'm gonna nudge the sharpen a little bit and also the vibrance so the yellow on this tin will pop I, I don't normally touch the shadow tint or the highlight tint in the creative option Next, I go down to curve and I normally add the S on my curve if necessary though. If not, I would just nudge like a little bit right here. That looks fine. Look at the black and then nudge the top up just a little bit. This looks really nice. Trust me. I'm not going to be biased. It's not because it's my work. <laughs> then I normally mess with the hue and saturation as well. So I'm going to select yellow and I'm going to punch that saturation just a little bit more. Perfect. I'm not going to overdo it. And then that's normally all I do with my Lumetri and my color grading. Now if you guys look closely, this is the before and this is the after. Major difference, right? Yep major difference after the color grading i normally add those effects transitions and those wishy wishy stuff or stock overlays so on and so forth you guys normally see in my videos after i add my effects and transitions so on and so forth i then move on to my sound design the sound design is the last thing i normally add to my videos of course i would have to find the music i'm gonna use for the video first before i even start to edit the shots because the whole video would be centered around that music and as you can see when you hear that and you see the three red bull canisters popping up on the screen that was in response to the beat of the music so getting your music before you start editing is essential in the editing process and the sound design, the sound design is what sells your video. It's, it's that little intricate thing that no one really pays attention to, but they're paying attention to it, if you get me. It's playing on their subconscious. They're hearing nice birds, seagulls chirping, the ocean waves, yada, yada, yada. But they're not really appreciating it. But if it wasn't there, they would notice that it's not there and it would be missing something. So yeah, your sound design is very important. I'm gonna post a sample of the video with just the sound design so you guys can hear the little intricate and subtle noise, well not really noise, sounds I have placed into the video to give it that wow effect. And you guys can see if you notice some of the sounds or you didn't notice them. And you can let me know in the comments below. So what do you think? Are my sound designs and SFX getting better? Let me know in the comments as well. Remember, you can follow me on Instagram at kingcrisis.official and also on Twitter where my handle is realkingcrisis. You will see it floating somewhere on the screen. Remember, 
Instagram is kingcrisis.official, Twitter, real King Crisis. It's about 1 a.m. now, super tired, but I got excited about 8 p.m. and I decided to do this video. I guess um, productivity never sleeps, does it? You are watching King Crisis TV.